Hey! <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. Long video today. Stick with us. There will be like little chapter things, but we're doing one trade for every single NBA team. Some are better than others because not a lot of teams need to make major moves. However, these are all trades that I think would improve every single team. But we're going to start from the bottom of the West, go to the top, and then we're going to start from the top of the East and go down. Buckle up. But So for the San Antonio Spurs, they would be sending Devontae Graham to the Raptors and getting back Dennis Schroeder. I think that for the Spurs, the best way to get um, good production out of Wemby, you've seen it with Trey Jones. So if what would be better than that, having two suit like real point guards who actually get the bigs the ball, then one is two. So you'd get Dennis Schroeder for Devontae Graham. Money works out everything just straight up i think neither team is really in contention right now it's just shrewd little moves to get the best out of your guys long term um next up the portland trailblazers this one's a little bit different um it's kind of is more for their future but they would be getting the blazers would be getting d'angelo russell and jalen hood shafino and giving up malcolm brogdon i think you would be able to get a young piece in Hood Shafino and D'Lo, who's a veteran who could teach Scoot Henderson how to really control an offense, play at his pace, because D'Lo is not the like quickest guy. They play very different games by all means. However, I think just getting veteran leadership in that locker room is something that the Blazers need, especially point guard leadership for Scoot. The third trade we have is the Memphis Grizzlies. They would be... Memphis Grizzlies would be getting back Patty Mills, Sadiq Bay, and AJ Griffin from the Hawks and giving away Marcus Smart. I think that the uh, Memphis Grizzlies really just aren't competing for anything this year, trying to boost their draft stock. And Marcus Smart, to be honest, like I haven't watched a ton of Grizzlies by any means. I watched a couple games when Ja was back. But I think getting a young piece in AJ Griffin and, and Sadiq Bay, I guess you could still class classify as young, getting those two back. Sneak bank good as fuck. Two solid role players that you can put alongside Ja, Bain, and uh, Triple J. And the Hawks, if they want to, they seem like they're content with their roster and they want to make a move to get to the next level to like a play in secured spot. I think adding Marcus Smart gives them the defensive upside they need. And um, that would be it Top for the three. Grizzlies. Huh? Top three. Yeah. Um, next one is for the Golden State Warriors. They've said they want to stay committed to their veteran core. So what does that mean? You got to ship out Jonathan Kaminga. So they would be shipping out. The Jonathan bucket. They would be shipping out Jonathan Kaminga and Gary Payton the second to the Brooklyn Nets for Lonnie Walker and Dorian Finney Smith, and the and I would say probably one first round pick, one first and two seconds probably in that because you're getting a young player. You always got to attach it with a pick. It's just how NBA works. I would, uh, man, would I have mixed feelings about that? I mean, nothing's really working right now, but <laughs> Fun to you see know, that. I think Lonnie is extremely underrated. Yeah, no, that's fair. But I mean, if you can get a young piece that you can put along with this core going forward, you got to do it. No, I like um, the come bucket. Uh, fifth trade is for the Houston Rockets. They would be getting Rashawn Holmes. I think that they need more of a big, strong, I guess, rim protecting and rebounding big. There's not a ton of those on the market right now With that's relatively cheap and on an expiring deal. So this kind of just sets them up because they're already so heavy into the cap with Fred Van Fleet and Dylan Brooks's money. So this is a one-year deal, and then you get Jock Lando off your books. Oh, how can I get in Brooks? It would be Rashawn Holmes for Jock Lando straight up. Um, I think it's a solid trade. Get some rebounding and defense to what you can really all ask for in a backup big. I'm a big proponent of getting a backup big that just really rebounds and plays solid defense to change the pace, especially when you have a guy like Sengun who's not a rim protector or known as a defender by any means. So you can get that change of pace and it has forces the other team to change up their offense. So that's like that's how you get better quality minutes out of your bench big. Um, next one is for the Lakers. This one's would probably shake up the NBA just as much as that Pascal Siakam trade did. Um, but the Lakers would be getting Zach Levine, Torrey Craig, and basically a no name guy, Jay Phillips, um, for D'Angelo Russell, Rui Hachimura and Gabe Vincent. And you could probably throw another first round pick in that from the Lakers. Um, I think you get your locked in third best player and you get a solid role player in Torrey Craig. 
and you get off Ruiz contract, which in hindsight is not looking as good as it did in the off season Delos contract, which he's just, there's, he's always going to be in rumors and it's just a weird fit, I think. So getting him out and Gabe Vincent's been hurt all year. And when he's been in there, he hasn't performed as well as the Lakers would hope. So give him another, some burn somewhere else. And I think he would, they would all be good on the bulls and it would keep them about where they are. If not a little bit better, to be honest. That's very tough. Ugh. All right. Next. Sure. Trade is for, sorry. You're doing great, man. It's a lot of talking. Um, Next trade is for the Utah Jazz. This one is, I was going to try and say like they should trade Lowry or ship out some guys and just tank a little bit. But I was like, the Jazz are playing really good ball as of late. So I was like, all right, why not we try and move them up a little bit in like the Western Conference tiers of teams. This also involves Marcus Smart. They would be getting Marcus Smart back in return for Kelly Olenek and Talon Horton Tucker. Um, pretty self-explanatory. You get defense get another guard that can play alongside the young guys, teach them some things. And Marcus Smart's just like a good locker room guy you can have. I don't know how happy he'll be in Utah, but next one is for the Phoenix Suns. They're kind of cap strapped. Their top three just makes so much money that you can't really do much with them. So I just had a little role player switch up. And I think a guy that can give you some quality minutes would be Cody Martin from the Hornets. Um, you'd be giving up Nasir Little and Utah Watanabe for Cody Martin. I think getting another two, three that can shoot the ball and stretch the floor better than Nasir Little can would be more impactful for the Suns roster. And it can also defend a little bit. I mean, Nasir Little is a better defender, I would say, but not Utah's Utah. a good defender. Brooklyn legend, Utah Watanabe. Yeah, but he doesn't play. So No, he does not play. Um this one's another big shakeup, kind of along the same lines as the Zach Levine trade. It's for the Dallas Mavericks. I have them trading for DeJounte Murray in exchange for Grant Williams and Seth Curry. And two first round picks. Can you take Patty too? No, his contract's too much money. Um but so sick about that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think you get I mean, the guard rotation would be insane if you're the Mavericks. Like, originally I had this trade for Siakam for the Mavericks, but obviously that changed because now he's a pacer. But DeJounte Murray would be going there. You would have four unbelievably good guards. Um, you would have to start Luka at the three or Kyrie or DeJounte at the three, and you just commit to playing small ball with Derek Lively in the five, even though he's big. But um, Could you, you send me Rick Jones Jr.? No. DJJ's, he finally found his role over there, bro. Yeah, I, yeah, this trade's kind of random. I think it could happen. I think it makes the Hawks better, especially if they can get that return or the Mavericks better if they can get that return back. But hey, we're making trades for fun out here. They're not probably none of them are probably going to happen. But hey, maybe if an NBA exec's watching, take notes. Um, last one is the New Orleans Pelicans. I think that they need more of a true point guard on this team. So this trade's kind of wild. Um, but it's again, Malcolm Brogdon is going to the Pelicans in exchange for Larry Nance, Dyson Daniels, uh, Jordan Hawkins, I think his name is, and then Najee Marshall. A uh, lot of really good role players. However, come playoff time, you don't need to be 12, 10, 12 deep. You don't. You need to be eight deep. You need guys that you can trust and – to be honest, I can't trust really any of those guys. Not uh, Marshall more so than anyone else, but Malcolm Brogdon is a proven commodity in this league on the Celtics the last few years, played really good for them, uh, won them. It was crucial in a couple series, and I think if the Pelicans want to get to where they can go, having a point guard that can be a 50-40-90 guy and distribute to Zion, B.I., and C.J. With, with the ball in his hands and can play off the ball and spot up, that's all you can really ask for in a point guard, especially in this league, who's not making a ton of money. Um, but the Pelicans also are kind of cap strapped. Zion, BI, and CJ and Valanciunas make so much money together. Um, so that's why I had to throw four guys in there. But yeah, I think that's that's the bottom ten of the West at the moment. Um, so we'll move into the top five. Slim. Uh so I got the Thunder, uh number one. Um, I think that it's time to develop in strength, help them out even more on the defensive end, but also boosting their offense. I think they could use uh, another point guard who 
plays at that similar pace as Shea, but also provides you a little bit more strength as well, can facilitate. So I'm trading Josh Giddy and Jalen Williams, J. Will, if you will, instead of J. Dub, J. Dub's hooping, and and some picks because Oklahoma City has a bunch of picks. And uh, I'm trading that for Kay Cunningham from the Detroit Pistons. I think that that would be nice. Have Kate at the one, Shea to Lou Dort, and then um, somehow get, you know, get, get Chet at the four if we can. But um, next I got the Nuggets and something simple. I don't, I don't know if picks could be involved in order to make this happen. I don't know what the salaries are looking like, but something along the lines of Reggie Jackson and DeAndre Jordan for Alex Caruso straight up. I think that the Nuggets have such a, such a strong starting five that all of their bench guys are, are plugging guys that can f- just fill any type of role. You think of a Bruce Brown, uh, you think of a Contavious Caldwell Pope. I think that Alex Caruso is another one of those guys that can, you know, be even six man for those guys and, and really initiate strong defense and, and being able to lead that to a, to a fast paced offense and, you know, hit Aaron Gordon transition or Jamal Murray. And then, so the next two teams, I decided that, it would be best if I took just those two teams and did the trade. So I have the Timberwolves and the Los Angeles Clippers and something along the lines of Kyle Slomo Anderson for (laughs) for Bones Highland, PJ Tucker and Brandon Boston Jr. Just throw the cat in there. But uh, I think that that would be decent. I think that you don't, you don't really lose anything as the Timberwolves. You get a seasoned vet and PJ Tucker, who's, I don't want to say sitting idle in the in, oh, in that, but you feel what <laughs> I'm saying. And I think that the Timberwolves could really use that. You know, it'd be more juice for Anthony Edwards, Cat, Nas Reed, Bones is another one of those cats who has that energy and that same style of play as those cats. And then maybe he could, you know, step in for Mike Conley and then they really have you know, the same defensive structure, but also just getting a little bit uh, on the a little bit more on the offensive side. Brandon Boston can be a, you know, 11th man that you, you know, plug in whenever, but he could, you know, study under those cats. Um, and then I have the Kings and uh, I wanted, I wanted something simple. I think that they could definitely use a little bit more defense. And I don't think that, I think they, I think they have nice bigs. I like the bonus. I don't mind Harrison Barnes. Um, I like, I like Trey Lyles. He's, he's, he's tough. I think Keegan Murray is a, a bigger cat, so he can defend pretty, pretty well and knock down the three ball three and D guy to his truest. Uh, so I'm thinking Davion Mitchell, Kevin Herter and Alex went Alex Lynn for Kobe White and Patrick Williams, if you can get that off from Chicago some some way, somehow. But uh, y'all let me know what y'all think about that. Yeah, let's move into the top of the East with Finn. You're on. Yeah, here you go. All right, everybody fucking strap in. Here we go. So number one, I already leaked this trade to the chat. This was a tough leak, but I leaked it. Uh, Celtics, it was tough to do a, whoa, you good over there, Matt? It was, uh, it was tough to do a Celtics trade. I don't know what they really need. Uh, I feel like they're the best team in the league, but I feel like they need someone who could come off the bench, shoot the ball well, be a little bit of a Swiss Army knife. So they're going to get John Kochar from the Grizzlies. They're going to give up Jordan Walsh and uh, that Palco Banton. I'm not familiar with his game, but he made the salaries work. Um, this guy, John Walsh, dude, is 26. He's a 4-4-4 four, four, and four guy off the bench. He's shooting 40% from three, getting no minutes. So – I feel like if I'm the season, I want someone to be able to pop off the bench and hit shots, like be a be a microwave guy, like not need to come in and miss a few, you know? 100. So now I'm doing the the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, I feel like they need like a Bruce Brown type figure, but I wanted them to get a little 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 bit more of someone who could who could defend a little better, you know, because they lost mm-hmm. Drew and, and they're lacking in that department. So I'm gonna have them get AC for Cameron Payne, which is he's a high salary player. And yep. uh, Bell Champ on the and Bell Champ now Bell Champ we talked about preseason. Yeah, Marjan. Uh, Marsh, what's his name? Marjan Bochamp. 
Martian Bochamp, not Belchamp, yeah, as yeah. a as an asset to any team. Like he, he he's a young cat and he's unbelievable. Um, so I understand like AC obviously is a little bit more of I mean he was a potential depoy first team all defense. That's a big name, but someone with a lot of upside and then someone like Campaign as a salary dump. He's that could work out. Point point guard. That's a good trade. I like that one a lot for the Bucks. Um. I didn't know what I wanted to do for the Sixers precisely. Um, it's tough. It, the East, the top of the East is tough to do. Um, so I, I have them trading picks and Tobias for Zach Levine straight up. They have picks to trade. Is that yeah, accurate, Matt? Five, yeah. yeah. They, have enough, they have enough picks to get. And I figured them. Tobias, Maxi, and Embiid. I mean, excuse me. Levine, Maxi, and Embiid are 10 times better than, than Tobias, Maxi, and Embiid. Easy. Yeah, I think you trust Zach Levine to be consistent enough. Where Tobias Harris is, we're friends with a lot of Sixers. Yeah, fans. you just put him in there as a consistent Tobias Harris. That was kind of the kind of the gist there. Um, and now for the Cavs, this is a bit of a troll trade on Matt, but I would also love to see this go down. Donovan Mitchell for Rolls Royce picks and Ben Simmons. <laughs> Come on, there's no way that's the only trade you have. I, I don't know. I feel like that'd be that you know, unbelievable. Fans, I'm sorry. I'm trying to, I, I feel like that'd be a great trade yeah, for the Cavs. I, you know, you need a money base too. You need a money base. And we'll take a money under the table. I feel like that'd be a great trade for the Cavs. They need, <laughs> they need wings. Do they need Royce? And and Ben, I feel like could be a great asset to the to the Cavs. Um, yeah, and I feel heat like up that ben, last seat on the bench. I feel like Ben could really fill the void on the G League team that Amani will leave when he. When he leaves, so I think I think Ben would be would be great. Now I'm gonna get some heat for this, and if you want to at me at Bill Simmons because I stole this from Bill Simmons, partially I, I worked it myself, but I partially got the idea from him. Um, the Heat trade for LeBron. Bronny comes to Miami, and they get rid of Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, that new kid. What's his name? JJJ. Hawkins Jr. And Hicks or Jovich. The salaries line up. LeBron retires in Miami and wins another chip. Wait, under under. Lusana. What are, your, what are our thoughts on that? It's definitely very intriguing. I'd be furious if it happened because the Heat would actually be. That wasn't the package Bill Simmons put together. He was just talking about LeBron getting traded back to Miami, and I was like, "Damn, that's kind of fucking cool." Yeah, no, um, that would be sick for the league, though, for sure. Hey, I'm saying the Pacers. This was before the Pascal Siakam trade. I did mm-hmm. this at work on Monday. So, I mean, they but already I, have I, their trade, but what they already have their trade to the, for the year. Okay, perfect. And I'll be able to save save face. All you have to know is it was going to be for Duncan Robinson. <laughs> yeah, I mean, have him he, come down and gun some threes. Buddy Hield in there? Who's the no? Buddy Hield's not in there. The salaries work, but it wouldn't work out in real life. It was Jay Walker and Jalen Smith. Yeah, no, I would do that trade if I was the Pacers, to be honest. Actually, maybe not. Maybe not. Jay hey, Walker in the future. Miami, I just saw today. Miami said uh, Dunk is untouchable, though. I know Miami. he is. He's he's, a, he, he's heat for life. Yeah. Now I'm moving to the Knicks. Let me move to the Knicks real quick. I feel like the Knicks are getting there. They don't have a highlight plays player. And in MSG, one highlight play night can change the momentum of the game. Easy. I want them getting Derek Jones Jr. for Matt's boy, Ryan, with the A. Ardicum, Ar- Archidiaco. Archidiaco. This is a, this is a – no, nah, what's so funny about that, dude? Because he's no, got a lot of upside. No, he doesn't, actually. I think he does. He's been sitting on that bench for years. I, for three and years. And he's not good. For three years. And he's not good. I don't know. The salary is lined up, and um, I feel like Derek Jones Jr. would fit as like an eighth man rotation on that Knicks team. Yeah, he'd be good on the Knicks. It's just not for that. <laughs> now, I know I'm doing a little bit of D Rob. I'm favoring the D Rob here, but for the Magic, you know, my number one goal was to get rid of Mo Wagner. I think Mo Wagner's fucking trash. So. Mo Wagner and Jalen Suggs for Duncan Robinson. Jalen Suggs is very good, though. I heard what? he could put on the move. Jalen Suggs is really good. I wouldn't give him. I don't think he's that good. 
I would give up. You'd have to – if I'm the magic, For I would D- give up. Dude, D-Rob would wet it up in Orlando. Light ball, comment, subscribe, show you, mom, show you. I heard Miami's also eyeing Jalen Suggs, or it could be eyeing Jalen Suggs. All right, number nine, how do we feel about Ayo DeSumo for Kaminga? Straight up. For the Bulls? Yeah, I think it would be better. Eh, yeah, for the <clears> Bulls, <throat> I would say so. If you're going to keep everyone, then yeah, I would say that. I mean, if you're not going to blow it up. Easy. You'd have to give a first-round pick to the Warriors. But. I think they would do Moses Moody first, but uh, it could work. And then this was just, you know, I had to do Cavs. I had to troll Nets. I had to had to, had to to just troll a little bit. Um, this was – the salaries worked, so don't at me. Kaminga for – which is funny because we both said Kaminga to the Nets. I think Kaminga would be a fantastic fit on the Nets. Kaminga for uh, Keon Johnson and Noah Clowney. Now – Clowney's if I'm the Warriors, I'm personally not making this trade. But I'm just going to throw it out there that the salaries did line up, and Noah, Clow- Noah Clowney could turn out to be a heck of a player in the NBA. He's tough. I don't know. He's tough. Yeah, I, I just feel like the Warriors want a vet if they're getting going to get rid of Kaminga. Well, you can you can give us the cum bucket, and we'll give you two uh, two rookies. So, <laughs> All right, let's go to the last five. <sighs> I told Maddie that when it comes down to it. I I got I got a spiel. I I have something. I got I you know cuz I'm A town, big A town, and I think if anybody is talk of the town, it is DeJounte Murray in regards to this trade deadline. I believe so, and I think that that is what it comes down to. So, you got plenty of you got plenty of teams in this region. You got you got plenty of teams uh, in other conferences that are eyeing the cat. I heard I heard the Lakers may they don't want to get rid of Austin Reeves. I don't want Austin Reeves. I heard that if they were to eye DeJounte Murray, which I personally don't want to get rid of the cat, that they would they would ship out not Max Christie, but Jalen Hood Shafino and and somebody else. But it ain't working. I'm not doing it. I don't want to do that. That's not what I'm going for. That's not what we're here for. If anything, I would take DeAndre Hunter, maybe ship him out for Kyle Kuzma. Um, I like that. I like that. If we could get Cade, that would be nice. Cade's not on the move. You don't think Cade's on the move? No. <laughs> He's the future piece of that franchise. Just baby, Trump, baby Trump won't let that happen. You think V's is going to let them get rid of Cade? No shot, dude. Am I going to say this? Are we talking? I, I put Josh Giddy on my list, but it, when it comes down to hoops, it, you know what it comes down to. All right. The next trade is for the Detroit Pistons. I think they just honestly need to get a couple more vets and get out of some bad contracts um, and probably the worst player ever. Um uh, I have them getting Cody Martin from the Hornets in exchange for Killian Hayes. Um, can let I think they both need a new change of scenery. Um, it's just a straight up trade. I don't think either team really benefits much, but it's just a shrewd move to give your guys like Jaden Ivey, Cade more uh, consistent minutes and can really see them develop without having Killian Hayes dominate the ball as much. And, Cody and they Martin could trade better. Killian Hayes for like a, a napkin. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Or um, send him to the Cavs. Dude, hey, ass. hey, that boy's spot. No cow. He's ass, bro. Send him right to Cleveland. Hey. This one, the next one is the Charlotte Hornets. Um, this one's a little more interesting. I think that it helps out both teams in the directions they want to go. I think it kind of eliminates the, the – I'll read through the trade first. I have the Hornets giving up Terry Rozier in, to the Warriors in exchange for Gary Payton II, Kevon Looney, and Jonathan Kaminga. Obviously, come bucket. You re-sign Jonathan Kaminga and the other guys to long-term deals. Now you have championship pedigree in your locker room. If you're the Hornets, you also have a young piece in Jonathan Kaminga that you can help build around with Lamelo, and you get away from a long, expensive Terry Rozier contract. And the Warriors get better because they need vets and guys that can put the ball in the basket. Great trade. We could use Gary Terry and A. I was going to do one for the Raptors, but I think they're probably going to be done with trading for a bit. So Um, then the last one is the Washington Wizards. This one's a little interesting. I think if the Lakers are really searching for a shakeup, I don't think they need to. But if they are, 
Um, you'd bring back Kyle Kuzma, and in return, you would get Rui Hachimura and Austin Reeves. You get some young pieces to put alongside Jordan Poole um, that are good on solid contracts for the next three years. That's cool. Um, I like that. And then the Lakers get Kyle Kuzma back, who could provide some more consistent scoring than those two provide. So that's one trade for every NBA team. It's been in about a minute per. So like, comment, subscribe, and let us know what you think in the comments. Peace. I'll see you after.